Hi VC, uh, Dave back with you again. Um, I meant to shoot this video um, yesterday but, um, but things got in the way. I've uh, been quite busy. Uh, I've only about an hour so um, to spare uh, so I'm just taking that opportunity to shoot this video and uh, get it out of the way because uh, I have been meaning to shoot it for a while. A lot of stuff to show you, a lot of interesting pickups since my last video. Um, I'll start off with a grail. Well, okay. Original pressings of this album are definitely grails, but this is a well. It's it's an early repress. It's an album that's you know early pressings of this are very hard to find in the wild, and it's one that had been on my want list for a long time. And that is the debut self-titled album by Suicide, um, Alan Vega and um, Martin Rev. Um, uh, yeah, so this originally came out in 1977. This is a reissue. It came out on Red Star Records originally, 1977. This is a re is a UK reissue on a label called uh, Demon Records. Um, now I'm sure a lot of you in the PC are familiar with um, with uh, excuse me with Suicide. Uh, this is a highly influential album. It's sort of um, electro-punk synthesizer, synthesizer rock and roll kind of thing. Um, best known tracks in our Ghost Rider and the second track, uh, a track on site which takes up most of side two called Frankie Teardrop, which is an extremely disturbing track which kind of details um, about a guy who goes insane and, and murders his family. It, it, it's very, very difficult to listen, but uh, this is a highly influential album. And um, I spotted this for sale from on a local buy and sell website. Uh, there was a guy selling off his collection. He was selling them off all individually. Now, most of the stuff he had was very overpriced, not very exciting kind of stuff. But um, he had this, well, I, I'll just say that he had a very, very underpriced for what it generally goes for. So I picked it up for 12 euros, uh, roughly the same as $12, you know. So um, a very nice copy, um, 1986 repress, uh, very hard to find, uh, you know, early presses of this in the wild. So very happy uh, with that. Um, the same seller had a couple of CDs for sale, so, so I grabbed two Arvo Part CDs from him, seeing as um, and this is um, uh, this is a choral piece called Beatus Beatus B E A T U S. I'm not sure how you pronounce it, with the Estonian Philharmonic Chamber Choir. And this is on Virgin Classics, and this comes in a really nice little. Um, little slip case there um i actually haven't had the chance to listen to this yet uh, this one um also lamentate uh, this is on ecm ecm new series so um yeah so ecm many not might not be aware that um they release quite a few of our parts albums um you know ecm being primarily a the jazz label, but yeah, they have also released um, stuff by Arvo Part and Steve Reich, of course. But um, yeah, I picked up these two CDs as well from him, along with the Suicide LP. So I'm um, very pleased with those. Um, I, I have some more CDs, but I'll leave them till the end. Um, this is something which I picked up um, from a local record store. Slow Dazzle by John Cale. So this came out in 1975. Um, yeah, so quite a lineup on this. Um, uh, Brian Eno was on here, Phil Manzanera. Um, some, of the some great tracks. There's a really good tr uh, cover, really intriguing cover version of um, Heartbreak Hotel on this. And. Um, uh, uh, this, uh, oh yeah, Mr. Wilson, the first track, which is a which is a tribute to um, Brian Wilson of um, the Beach Boys. Um, 
This is an original Spanish pressing on um, on Island Records, so it has that same pink rim design as the UK um, Island releases. So um, yeah, um, slowly been picking up um, John Cale's solo albums here and there in the wild. I managed to grab um, Paris 1919 some time back, which. Um, you know, it's a, it's a really hard one to find, but uh, yeah, this is a maybe slightly overlooked um, album in the John Cale um, discography, but certainly worth, worth picking up. I, I think it's an extremely strong uh, album. Um, now, this is something, this is something which I picked up totally at random. Uh, I actually found this in um, a cash converter shop, in the same cash converter shop where I found the, um, uh, God, what was it, the Graham Young, oh, sorry, Graham, Graham Nash, Jesus, sorry, anyway, look, never mind, uh, Passion Play by Jethro Tull, um, yeah, I just happened to come across this randomly while browsing the, the vinyl in there, um, picked this up, this up for four euros and fifty cents, <clears throat> which I think is quite, quite decent, um, uh, this came out in '73, and it is a it is a concept album. What, what the concept is, and well, it's it's you know passion. It comes with this booklet, which is like um, I like the way that they you know made it look like a kind of one of those theater um, theater programs. With these kind of um, you know made up kind of biographies or acting biographies of of the band, but. Um, yeah, came out in seventy three um, uh, on Chrysalis uh, Records, um, in really quite de decent condition. Uh, I've only had one listen to this so far. Um, yeah, I think I have a few more listens to it before I fully make up my mind on it. I think it's one of those records that maybe you know requires repeat listenings. I think, but. Um, Certainly pleased to pick it up for such a such a great price. Uh, Passion play by um, Jethro Tull. Um, okay, now <clears throat> moving on. Uh, myself and Ben, anyone who watches our videos, you may be aware of a character that we mention from time to time called a magpie. Now, yeah, he's he's a fellow collector um, who. You know, anyway, um, he sold some of his collection to a local record store. Um, I remember going in. I was in like this is a couple of weeks ago. Went in there and um, I was asking the guy behind the counter, "Oh, where did these records come from?" And he said, "You mentioned Magpie's real name," and I thought, "Oh yeah," but uh, yeah, he's been selling off some of his collections. So uh, I did. Now say what you like about Magpie. He does have quite interesting musical taste. Um, this is something which I have to credit um, Freddie Big Star for introducing, well certainly myself. Before I saw Freddie feature this particular artist, I would never have heard of her. Uh, Catherine Ribeiro and Alp. Uh, Catherine Ribeiro, she's a French singer, French singer who initially, for, for, you know, there's not an awful lot of information about her on the internet. Um, she started off as a fairly straightforward chanteuse singer doing covers of either the Piaf and so forth. But around about 1969, she started off with this band, uh, Catherine Ribeiro and Alp, uh, doing kind of psychedelic, very experimental, very out there kind of, um, very political kind of music. Um, she had quite a distinctive voice. Like, okay, th th let me explain. This is an album called Liberté. Liberté with a question mark. <clears throat> I think this is the fourth or fifth album that came out under the Catherine Ribeiro and Alp um, label. Um, original French pressing on, um, on Fontana. So, 
sorry, two seconds there. I think. Okay, it's that weird kind of freezing thing is happening with my um, um, computer again there. So just bear with me two seconds. I don't know if this is actually recording or not. Um, yeah, so I'll just. Um, I don't. I don't know what to say. Yeah, so I just keep talking anyway. So yeah. Um, um, yeah, Catherine Ribeiro, um, um, and I'll, uh, yeah, it's back to, back to normal again, I think, is it? Okay. <laughs> So the, the joys, the joys of recording. Okay, it's definitely back to normal now. Okay, so I'll just continue. <laughs> I don't know if, if any of the stuff I was saying there was recorded or not, but because um, I, I can see what I'm recording on the screen here on my laptop. It was just freezing for about a minute or so there. So anyway, um, yeah, so it's original French pressing on Fontana. Um, I would kind of compare this to pretty much like a French version of Nico. Uh, she has that similar kind of, um, similar, slightly similar kind of vocal style and uh, with this very kind of bleak, minimalistic um, backing with a lot, of, a lot of it, which is quite heavily organ driven. Um, very, I, this is the, the, I think this has to be the first time I've ever come across one of her albums in the wild. Uh, her best, the, the album which, the album which everyone generally agrees is the one to go for really is one called Pay, P-A-I-X, which I think is French for Peace, and I came out in 1972. So, um, but th this, this is an extremely good album as well, and um, yeah, it, it's, it's quite challenging, I will say that. It's probably not for everybody, but um, you know, if you do like kind of a challenging listen, uh, yeah, it's, it's definitely recommended. Now, this is an other item from Magpie's collection, which I bought from this record store. This is a 12 inch called um, Europe in the Year Zero. Uh, well, it's, it's uh, technically it's a mini album EP. Uh, this came out in 1982. Uh, it's a compilation. Now, it features Yazoo, a quite early track by Yazoo, um, called um, um, Goodbye 70s. Uh, also, there's a band on here called Color Me Pop, who have two tracks. And then there's a band called Sudeten Kresh. Now, Sudeten Kresh were active in the early 80s, kind of synthesis, kind of dark wave synthesizer, post-punk kind of thing. Um, I came across a very rare 12 inch by them last year in a charity shop and um, there's two tracks by them on here um, are Kisses Out of Fashion and Dance and um, so um, yeah they, they didn't record much other than release much but there's two, two excellent tracks by them on this um, compilation which by the way um, came out on a label called S Phonograph, which I think it possibly is connected to Mute Records. Um, uh, yeah, the, the Mute Records is mentioned here. So, um, like a Mute um, offshoot, I think. So, um, anyway. <clears throat> okay. Now, moving on. Uh, I made a trip down to my hometown um, uh, a little village called Glengareth. Now, uh, what, on the way down there, I, st I just popped into, um, I stopped in a town called Bantry, uh, which is, you know, kind of, it's not a big town, it's a town of maybe about 3,000 people, but it does have a few charity shops, and anytime I'm there, I always have a, have a good route around with these charity shops to see if I find anything. Now, I found a couple of interesting classical items. And um, <clears throat> uh, this is by a French composer called André Jolivet, 
And Andre Jolivet, he was um, part of the 20th century French composer who emerged in the 30s, and he was connected with a French group of composers called um, called the Andante, who also included um, Olivier Messiaen. And Messiaen, I'll, I'll be getting to him in a minute. Now this is um, this is really this is a pressing from 1954. So this is. Yeah, this is pretty old. Um, it's on London, um, London Records. I'll just show you the um, label there. Um, there we go. Um, Ducroquet du du Thompson. So it's surely a very con con concertino for trumpet, string, orchestra, and piano. And um, also a piece called Andante for Strings. Yeah, so this is a, a you know, early, a kind of mid 20th century modern classical. So um, quite, you know, so if you if you like, say like support Olivier Messiaen, this is, um, you know, um, kind of, kind of along similar, kind of similar-ish lines. And um, yeah, very interesting find. They're kind of, Kind of rare enough, as I, I think, um, uh, you know, to f find this in the wild. Um, just bear with me. Uh, the sleeve is quite fragile as well, very, very thin uh, cardboard sleeve. And um, also, while I was down there, I found oh, well, this. Uh, this is on a label called Das Alterwork, which I always grab whenever I see in the wild. Um, Heinrich Schutz uh, Motets. This is a um, German composer of the 17th century, so um, uh, vocal pieces. Um, nice bit of Baroque, um, early Baroque um, uh, choral work. So, um, yeah. Also found that. Now, I found. While okay, while I was browsing the charity shops down there, I also found some some interesting CDs. Um, uh, Vangelis uh, themes. Uh, this is um, uh, yeah, this is a list of them. Um, so including some of the th uh, themes from um, Blade Runner, and some lesser known ones, Antarctica. Um, opening titles of Mutiny and the Bounty. So, um, yeah, and it's nice to find some of these. Um, some of these themes might be kind of hard enough to find, um, uh, but they're all collected on this one CD, which was a which was a nice little find. Okay, um, <clears throat> more charity shop finds, which I made around the place. Um, this is an album called. Um, uh, Self-titled album Harlem River Drive, which is um, this is a kind of Latin influenced funk album which came out in 1971. Uh, this is a CD reissue from about um, 2005. So uh, yeah, I found this in a charity shop. So um, um, excellent. Um, the, in particular, the, the track "Broken Home" is just absolutely superb. Um, this is. You know, this is a real great example of you know, New York funk, uh, kind of funk jazz, um, early seventies. Um, so um, yeah, the the original album, I think, um, final album, I think, goes for silly money. But uh, very nice to find that on CD. And the harder they come, the harder they fall. And the harder they come, Jimmy Cliff, the soundtrack album. I picked this up in a charity stroke uh, thrift shop as well recently um two by laura marling um uh, alas i cannot swim which i think was our debut album and also i speak because i can now olivier mess i uh, i've been finding a few things by mess recently I've, I've picked up another cd by him which i think i showed in my last video possibly uh, Messian, um Eclairs sur le Della, Illuminations of the Beyond, an orchestral or orchestral work by him. Uh, this is released on um, 
Deutsche Grammophon. Uh, came out in 1994. And I also found this, which is as well, uh, Mystery of Ancient Voices. Uh, this is um, medieval French um, uh, choral uh, music, um, dating back quite a bit, dating back to um, you know the twelfth. 12th, maybe 12th to 11th century and possibly even further back so um, very interesting find on a French label called P Pierre Vernet um, okay a few other things to show but I'll finish up with this very interesting um, charity shop find as well Thunderbirds and other top 60s TV themes volume 2 this is a collection of 1960s television themes, most of them being British, but there's a couple of American ones in here as well, like, um, uh, I think, what, uh, I think the, is, I don't know, um, uh, anyway, Dick Powell show, which I think was American, I'm not sure, but anyway, so there's a lot of cult um, TV themes in here, like Thunderbirds, um, uh, the event, the, the Avengers, Z cars, um, what else is there? Um, yeah, there's some really obscure stuff in here as well. Like there's one in particular. Um, oh, what is it again? Um, yeah, yeah, it's something called Birds, which was the theme from Euro Fashion '68, which is on BBC fashion show and it was only a one-off but uh, it's really interesting and um, you know it's got a lot of these um these um tra you know themes kind of groovy 60s themes collected on the one cd so it was really nice find uh yeah there was some other stuff that i was going to show but the video is running on a bit probably due in part that little technical glitch in the middle so um thanks very much for watching everybody and um i hope you all have a great weekend